The Lost Dingo Once upon a time, a young dingo was on his way home when he realized he was lost. These trees don't look familiar. I'll have to ask someone for directions. The young dingo wandered through the forest until he came across an old eagle. He knew the eagle was old because it had no feathers on its head. Pray tell, good sir, asked our dingo. I've gotten lost in this forest. Could you tell me how to get home? Old Eagle was wise and patient and considered the dingo for a long time before speaking. I don't speak dingo, the eagle said and flew away. The dingo continued to wander aimlessly until he bumped into a little rabbit nibbling the weeds. I say, good rabbit, our young dingo pleaded. Could you point me in the direction of my home? I seem to be lost. The rabbit jumped at the sound of the dingo's voice and ran away screaming, help, a dingo is going to eat me. The flustered dingo shook his head. Why will no one help me? He wondered as he continued wandering. Eventually, he noticed another dingo. Fellow dingo, our dingo shouted, please help. I've lost my way home and no one here will get me back. The other dingo looked him up and down and said incredulously, you are home. This is where the dingoes live. As he looked around, he realized this was true. He was home. Well, said our dingo as he laid down for a nap. That story was pointless. Hello, and welcome back to Gardening with Andrew. We got a real humdinger of a video today. Oh mama, we're gonna learn how to tie knots, we're gonna learn some math, and we're gonna fight global warming all with burlap. Here in the garden today, it's lovely and sunny, a bit windy, and it's becoming hotter and hotter as spring progresses slowly, inevitably into the hot, dry, arid experience that is a summer in California. So with summer comes lots of sunshine and unfortunately, sunshine isn't always good for plants. More sunshine does not equal more goodness for the plants. There's actually a max for how much a plant can consume, uh, take in for the photosynthesis process. So we need to figure out the right amount of light for every plant and actually reduce it when there's too much of it in the summer. We all know and love the process of photosynthesis, the ability of plants, these little green buddies here, to take in light and turn it into growth and energy and ATP. That's the magic of our world that fuels everything uh, big and little. But these plants can only take in so much at once, kind of like a car. You can only put so much gas into a car. If you took the gas nozzle and like sprayed it all over your back seat, that doesn't make the car go faster. It really doesn't help at all. In fact, don't do that. Don't even think about doing that because it would be unpleasant for a lot of reasons. Everything that's alive breathes in some way or another. It's called respiration, which is like the fancy word for breathing. With us, we got lungs, you know, with the spiders, they got a little stoma in their stomach that they kind of like passively pass air through. So if you trap like a spider in a jar, it suffocates just because it doesn't have the airflow around it, uh, that sort of thing. But plants, they have stoma too. Little tiny microscopic openings all over themselves that air flows into. And they actually breathe in and out through these stoma passively. So the air comes in and they capture up all of the carbon dioxide. They go through photorespiration and the Calvin cycle, do their whole photosynthesis thing, and then out comes the other side, a bit of oxygen as a O2. So it goes back into the atmosphere and then we get our chance to have a breath. But one of the things that us gardener types want to make sure happens is that 
Well, the water we give to the plants doesn't immediately evaporate away, right? If it's really hot and sunny, water evaporates more quickly. Uh, it escapes out into the atmosphere and the plants can't use it. So we use things like mulch on the ground, just some kind of ground covering, and that helps keep water in the ground for the plants to enjoy. But the plants are always respiring. They're always breathing. So when it gets hot, they need to breathe more to cool down and to run their processes. Just like us, we sweat. So we go through more water when it's hot. Same thing with the plants. And in fact, if plants get too hot, the stoma, the little areas where they breathe through, they actually just close down. They're losing so much water that they're like, okay, whoa, we gotta like chill out here for a second. So they close up their mouth. <laughs> So they close their stoma and they're no longer exchanging their oxygen and their CO2, that conversion process. It's all just kind of hanging out and they're just using what they got in their mouth. Kind of like a submarine if it didn't have like backup air and they were just running off of the air in the submarine and they only have three hours to live, that kind of uh, movie plot. The same thing with the plants. When it gets too hot, they have to just use what they got and they'll just kind of hold on to it. And then when it cools down at nighttime, they'll open up and they'll start doing respiring again. But when that happens, they get so full of oxygen that the, the, the balance of the chemicals inside them tilts the other way and they actually start turning oxygen back into CO2. So the long and the short of it here is if it gets too hot, uh, the plants stop breathing and they start converting oxygen backwards back into CO2 just like we do and they actually barf that out into the atmosphere when it cools down. So we need to stop that from happening. It's bad for the plants and it's bad for the environment. We need to help them by cooling them down and that literally means just less light. So in order to cool down our plants and make sure they're running efficiently, we're going to use shade cloth, which is exactly like what it sounds like. It's cloth and it creates shade. Any kind of shading thing will work for this. You could even use like cardboard if you wanted to, so long as there's gaps for the sunlight to come through partially. But we're going to look at some of the different options for shade cloth out there on the market. Uh, but really anything you got lying around will work if you know how shady it is. So the first thing we got to do is pick a good shade cloth that's the right amount for the plant we want and then figure out how much it's shading out. Behind me here, I have two of our tomato varieties out of three. I want to put up some shade cloth right in the front here. There's a lot of options for shade cloth out there. Most of them, the commercial varieties, are a form of plastic, polyethylene, that you can get woven or knitted in various uh, varieties and colors. If you're going to go with that option, very easy to find. You can get it in big rolls or fold it up like a tarp. And just make sure to get one that's hemmed, because if you get a hemmed edge or like, an, like a finished edge, they'll last a lot longer and they won't wear out as quicker. But I'm always a sucker for the, um, the more natural varieties of things. So we're gonna go with burlap, uh, this stuff here. So it's like what you wear, you know, like a, t t a potato sack, you know, if you have no clothes and you like live in a barrel or whatever, uh, that kind of stuff very uh, sheer. Is that the word? Sheer. You can see through it there. And we're going to look at, first of all, how good burlap is at blocking light. But it doesn't come with like a light rating, you know. And since all burlaps are different, we have no way of telling without math. Don't freak out. It's just math. We have a basic equation here, and all we're trying to figure out is what percentage of light is blocked. Like 100% is it's totally dark, and 0% is that you're looking through a window. We're going to use this simple equation here, which you can do on your calculator. But really, the first step is get an app that can calculate how dark or light it is. So grab the app in the link in the description and figure out what number it says on the front of it. Any number will work as long as it changes when you put your hand over it. It's not gonna be 100%, it'll be a little different every time you do it. Don't worry about the fine details. 
then put your shape cloth over it and capture that number. So you want the number where it's full sun, the full power of the light, and then what number it was when the shade was over it. So for me, it was 1211 and 665. And I'm going to use those numbers in this equation. So I subtract one from the other, divide it by the full sun value, and then I'm going to add two zeros to it. So it's gonna be a number like 0 0.45. All you gotta do is move the decimal places two to the right, bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a number, 45%. Okay, so we've established with a bit of light algebra that Arbor Lap is sufficient uh, for what we're trying to do here. It'll block enough light for this situation. And again, you don't need to be too picky about the exact number. It's just kind of cool to know that you can figure out that number yourself for the percentage. So we're going to go ahead and build the thing. That's what we came here to do. So for today, we have four ingredients that we're going to use to make this thing happen. One, obviously, burlap, right? Uh, two, sticks of some kind. Bamboo canes work. Uh, don't get the green ones because the green is dye and then that dye like leaches out into your soil and Lord knows what that dye is. Uh, but any kind of sticks will do. You can also use metal poles of some kind or, or plastic guys if that's your persuasion. Also, some kind of string. Zip ties would also work. You know, the kind that like you stretch them once and then they'll uh, that kind of thing and then you can never get them undone. Um, just watch out for your fingers when you're doing it. That's an option. Or uh, twist ties like you get on your sandwich back in the day. Um, anything like that. Really anything would work. Anything you can use to tie stuff up. Tape really doesn't work. Um, rubber bands really don't work simply because the UV from the sun uh, damages them. Lastly, skeezers or something to cut the twine. This knot you totally don't have to use. You could just use a standard tie your shoelaces kind of knot, but this one is specifically designed for preventing the string or rope from sliding down a nice slippery pole like a bamboo cane. So what you're going to do is four loop-de-loops all the way around, and then you're going to take that end there, swing it under, and bring it around and then duck back under the other end of the rope uh, just to get it really in there and then the tricky bit is you go back over one last time and sneak it through the little knotty kind of hole that you want to want to just put the rope through because it feels good oh lovely look at that and then you got to tug on both ends real good till, till you can't tug on them anymore and then you got yourself a knot that is very strong in one direction but you can still slide up in the other and then you do a little knot at the end just to hold it in place
Bam! Look at that! A whole shade cloth to cover all these little tomato-y fellas. I would love to see what you have figured out. This is totally just an experiment, an idea that we're trying out, and I would love to see how you execute it and what problems you've run into and how you have overcome them. So please do uh, hit me up on Instagram, Gardening with Andrew, or, you know, in the comments down below of the old uh, YouTubes. And while you're here, you know, maybe subscribing. It's a thing you should consider because it makes me happy, if nothing else. So that's us for today. We're all done. We'll see you next time.